Okay, hi, welcome back to part three of the character customization tutorial with uh, Mixed Picks Visuals! Uh, now it's time for the magic to happen. Now we're gonna get into the script, the functions, the code, the, um, the magic. Okay, so we have the UI set up with all our buttons and we got our dude in the background ready to get dressed for success. Uh, so let's just get into it. Um, we go to our assets. I have made a scripts folder. Uh, we will want one object to contain um, a script that will handle all this. So I will create this in the scene. I will create an empty. I will call this Customization Manager. Uh, I will zero it out. It doesn't really matter, but just for my peace of mind, I will zero it out. So let's in let's create a script. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, C sharp script. We're going with C sharp, and it will be called uh, Customization Manager. Aha. All right, and let's open that up. We are inside of our customizations manager script uh, where we will create all the stuff. Uh, you could split it up into different scripts, but uh, I figure it's so short now and it's a small project, so I think it's fine to use the uh, to use the uh, single script uh, method. Uh, okay, what we need to do is we need to set up a couple of things. We will need to link in our different uh, hair models, beard models, tusk models, uh, hair colors, skin colors. So we will need a collection of objects to choose from. Uh, and to do this, uh, we need to categorize them. Um, so I will create an enum, which is a collection of stuff called appearance detail. Uh, in here, I will create the different uh, sorts of uh, the different types of customizations that is available uh, for this. Uh, and uh, as of now, we have hair model, we have beard model, we have uh, tusks. Let's go with tusk model actually. Uh, we have hair color, and we have skin color. These are the things we will be able to um, use, uh, change. Uh, what we need to do then is we need to create uh, a link to the different uh, prefabs that we have for Harris and uh, stuff. So I'm going with, instead of going with public var var variables, I've learned to use uh, private ones, but you can do serialize, sorry, uh, field, which will allow us to link stuff in the inspector. So let's go private uh, game object array called uh, hair models. Uh, so for hair models, we will also need a uh, we need a link to the to the uh, hair anchor, which is the transform that we will attach the hairs to. Uh, so we will call that head uh, private private. Transform. I cannot type for shit today. Transform. Um, head anchor. Okay. Uh, so that's what we need to uh, to have for the hair models. And then if we go back to Unity, uh, we can see that uh, in our customization manager, we need. To, oh, it's the manger. <laughs> uh, let's pull that script that we created. No, that one. This one onto the the game object itself. Uh, then we have the ability to set up a couple of uh, game objects, which we will use as hair prefabs. Uh, so let's link those right away. We go to the prefabs folder. Uh, I have created two different hair models. I did not create three. I just created two. Uh, but I created one empty uh, hair prefab for uh, when they will have no hair. Uh, I figured that was the easiest solution to do it, and I don't see a problem with it. Uh, so hair one, we will link to element zero. Hair two, we'll link to this one, and uh, hair three, we'll, we'll link to that one. And hair three is just a ga empty game objects; there's nothing inside, which is fine. Uh, okay, so we have linked our hairs. Now we need to link our uh, hair anchor. So let's search for the. Um, okay, let's. First click the customization manager, then we search uh, head anchor. We find it here and we pull it straight away into the transform. Okay, so let's go back to the script. 
uh, I have one main function which is applying modifications uh, regardless of which one it is. So depending on which one it is, it uh, uh, puts a switch uh, function and have different cases for which uh, which type of modification we are about to uh, make. So let's write that. Uh, void apply modification. Uh, this won't be public and if you don't write anything it's private by default. Uh, this will take two arguments. Uh, first, uh, it will be which type of modification we will take, which is the appearance detail um, enum. And we will call it detail. I have, shouldn't call this, okay, appearance detail, like that. And then we will have an int of which, uh, an integer containing which of the prefabs we are uh, changing to. Okay, uh, we will add a switch thing here. <laughs> I don't, I'm not really sure what it's called. A switch. Uh, let's add a switch, and we will base that on uh, which which type of uh, appearance we are changing. So, in the case of the hair, we will write the case appearance detail dot hair model. Oh, now we have auto completion again. That's nice. Uh, okay, so what do we want to do in this case? Uh, a few things. Uh, we want to, of course, add the uh, display the new hair, but we also want to, if there is already a hair in that space, we want to remove the old one so we can toggle between these. So that's the the the, the principle of what we do is instead of just switching the mesh for, uh, at one object to different meshes, we will switch between objects. And to switch, we need to create new ones and we need to delete old ones. So uh, we need to create a new variable which checks for. Uh, which uh, which game object is uh, which hair game object is active? So we will pre create a game object. It doesn't need to be serialized because we won't uh, link this. And it's called active hair. Okay, so uh, we check if active hair is not null, which means that if it's if it's uh, already been assigned, we will destroy that uh, that active hair okay uh, so now that's that out of the way now we know there won't be any hairs in the way um, let's create our new hair okay then we go active hair because we want it to be a reference to active hair so we can delete it later if we want to uh, we will do game object instantiate uh, and we will go with hair models, uh, which is the array that we created for the prefabs, and at index ID. So this means if we say that we want, uh, if we send uh, hair model and one to this uh, function, uh, we will uh, try to find the hair model at index one in the list that we created, so the array. Okay. Then we need to make sure that it's, uh, you know, uh, zeroed out and uh, at the place it's supposed to be uh, and also attached to the actual head anchor that we created. Uh, so we will go active hair dot transform dot set parent and then the hair, uh, sorry, the head anchor. Next thing we want to do is we want to zero out the, to make sure that the position is zero, rotation is zero and scale is one. Uh, with for that, I will write a um, a help function, uh, which I want to do in a, a separate script. So I'm going back to Unity to the scripts folder, creating a new script, C# -sharp script called util, which is utility. Here we will create an extension method for the uh, for the transform. Uh, so this will be a public static class. It will not be a model behavior. We don't want to attach it to a game object. And it will be a public static void reset transform. We will send this transform transform. To be honest, I'm not 100% uh, sure how why I 
put that in because but it helps us uh, you'll see later uh we will then do with this transform we will put transform dot local position to vector three dot zero we will do transform dot local euler anglers which is the rotation to vector three dot zero we will also put transform dot local scale to vector 3.1 so now it's all zeroed out uh, so what we can do because we've written this is we go back and we go active hair dot transform dot uh, what we call it reset transform okay so that that allows us to do it uh, real quickly so that, that it thinks that it's a method uh, that uh, is originally used in transform class um so that's real simple i encourage you to do that in all of your projects i really love having a reset transform thing okay and that's actually it um that the only thing we need to do right now in this method and we also because it's a switch we need to add the break command uh in the end of the case because cases cannot fall through <laughs> or something it always says that one of the most common error messages i get Okay, uh, but this doesn't really help us because we need to hook up those buttons to make something out of this. So let's do that. We're soon there. You can soon see results. Uh, what is a little rigid about NGUI is the inability to have to send uh, uh, the parameters in your functions from the buttons by default. So in the plus button, we can choose to um, call functions, but we can't tell them anything else than that we want to call them. Uh, so we will need to have a little cumbersome scripting for this. Uh, so we will create one uh, one uh, function for the minus and one for the plus. Okay, so we have the public uh, set hair model. Sorry, the public void set hair model up. Let's just go hair model up. We will have the public void hair model down now we need to work with indices uh, because we need like when we hit the if we go too far if we have only three arrays uh, sorry three hairs and we go to hair number three and we hit plus again it shouldn't go to hair four it should go to hair, hair zero and to be able to control this we would need to control with this with an index so let's create an index for it so let's call it uh, an int we will call hair index we could go with a byte because it's really small, but uh, it's more complicated to use addition in bytes, so we'll use it. And this should be zero by default. Okay, so uh, what we want this method to do is we want it to uh, increase the hair index and then send the hair index to the apply modification with the hair uh, appearance detail. Uh, so we need to check if the hair index is smaller than hair models dot length to make sure that we don't go too far uh, minus one uh, because the length is yeah th trust me this is <laughs> this is what needs to happen uh, we will uh, uh, increment the hair index by one else we will put it to zero okay and then we will click apply modification and we will take the appearance detail dot uh, hair model and we will send it uh, with the hair index okay so now uh, if the hair index is zero which is by default uh, we will uh, increment it. it will be one and we will send it to uh, the apply modification we will tell we want to change the hair we want the hair to be one and then it'll do the funky stuff that we created. So we can actually test this out right away. Okay, so we have the plus button for hair, which is actually the only thing we've written so far. Uh, so let's, uh, on the onClick uh, event trigger handler here, uh, let's find our objects that's called customization manager. Let's drag it in there. And now we can choose from which uh, functions uh, are contained with that, within that object. Uh, so let's go to the customization manager script, which we created. Uh, and uh, I'm realizing it wasn't public, so let's make it public. It is public, so we have some issues in the compiler, probably. 
Yes, we do. Oh, <laughs> because I already written the reference script. Let me just clear that out. There we are. Okay. So now that it compiled, we should be able to find our uh, newly written thing, which is hair model up. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's actually run that. See what happens. So when I click this button, I should uh, be able to change uh, hairstyles. Ah, but we've forgotten something. Oh no, we haven't actually. Let's try it. Okay, nothing happens. Why? Okay, I found the issue. Uh, <laughs> we were a little too sloppy. Uh, I see here that I've written hair color. This should be a hair model. You probably already noticed that, of course, you clever, clever people. Okay, let's go back. Let it compile. And do it again. There we are. Now we are toggling between the different hairs. Uh, so once it hits uh, the max hair, it will go back to the zero. Uh, now we need to do something similar for the minus. Uh, so we need to do another check uh, to make sure that it doesn't go below zero here instead. And if it goes below, uh, it's about to go below zero, it'll go to max instead. So if hair index is bigger than zero, we can uh, we can uh, subtract from it, and if not, oh, I forgot the parentheses. I feel I'm a little sloppy with the coding today. I think it's a, because it's a different keyboard than I'm used to. Uh, else, we will um, put the hair index at the max that it can be, which is hair models dot length minus one. Okay, so now that we got the hair index sorted out, let's actually apply our modification. Uh, we can actually just copy paste this line because it's the same. Sorry. Okay, uh, we also need to assign that button, of course, to actually handle that function. So let's go to the minus button. Uh, go back, go down to the UI button, find the on click thing. Let's drag customization manager in there. Locate the function and let's go. So now we can do the plus, we can also do the minus. Okay, so that's basically the uh, the gist of the whole thing. Uh, now it's uh, with the tusks and the beards, it's just a matter of replication. Uh, so I, I'm gonna do that, but I'm, I think I'm gonna fast forward through it uh, because it's exactly the same thing, but just uh, we will add a new array of hair models called beard models. Uh, we will have a new anchor for the beard anchor, the jaw anchor, a uh, new in the, uh, new object for the active beard, a new index for the beard, and uh, new uh, functions for the buttons. Okay, so I think we're gonna fast forward and just go ahead and do this. Okay, so that's the script things that we need to change for the beard. I'm gonna do the same for uh, tusks. Okay, so now we're done it for tusks as well. Now we need to go down to the actual uh, the switch with the details, uh, where we also need to make uh, basically duplicates of these. So. Yeah, let's copy that and change this to the beard model. So in case it's a beard model, we basically want to do everything the same um, as with the hair. So we want to check if the active beard uh, already exists and we want to remove it. So let's just copy paste that variable like that, like that, and like that. And we want to go with the jaw anchor for the uh, for the uh, parent and we want to check in beard models all right so let's do that also for the tusks uh, 
Uh, it's also going to use the jaw anchor. Okay, so now we have our our basic uh, mesh switchers. Uh, let's uh, I'm gonna apply all those to the uh, to the buttons. Currently, we're running right now, and we forgot to change the name of some methods. That's what happens when you copy paste, folks. Yeah, so let's connect, connect those buttons. Uh, we can close the orc base, that's not important. We already fixed the first element, let's go with the second element. Okay, so we got the plus button and the minus button. The minus button is going to be connected to, surprise, surprise, the customization manager. Uh, we will go with the beard models down. This one is going to go with the customization manager. And go with beard model up okay this one will be customization manager uh, tusk model down tusk model up and tusk model down okay then we do down and up yeah okay so uh, now if we play the game no we cannot do that because we have not yet assigned the stuff to the customization manager the different prefabs so let's uh, also add some uh, beard prefabs. Go to the prefabs folder that we created. And uh, we go to, to, to beard one, uh, beard two, and then I'm actually gonna go with hair three. I just created one because it's just an empty game object, so it could be empty whatever. So it's fine. Uh, tusk models. Uh, in the case of the tusks, uh, the orc always needs to have tusks, uh, no matter the case, so it can never be empty. So I created three of those because otherwise he looks like this, and that's bad. All right, uh, we need to assign the jaw anchor as well. So let's find the jaw anchor, there it is, and pull it down there. Okie dokie, now we should be able to play. So, hair, hair, beard, and beard. Uh, t -t 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 Tusks. And tusks. Okay, let's get into the skin color modification. Um, but da -da. we will create a new set of stuff, namely the serialized field private uh, color thirty two array called skin colors. All right, so that's that will be an array of our different skin colors. Then we need a reference to the mesh renderer, which will contain the material that will contain the color that we will want to change. Okay, so let's uh, we will need to link a private uh, skinned mesh renderer because uh, it's a skin mesh renderer uh, called a skin renderer. All right. We will create a new index for that, uh, which will be in skin color index, which will be zero. And then we will create the different uh, uh, button uh, things for that. Uh, we'll just uh, copy paste this as usual. Like that. I think that's all, all the tusks are gone in those methods, yeah. All right, so now we need to ch uh, decide what happens if we want to change the skin color. In this case, we don't want to uh, delete anything that's already there because we always only want to modify what's already there. So we don't need to do the null check for this. Uh, what we want to do is we want to access that skin renderer, which we uh, call it. We will go to uh, material. We will assume it has material, it always has material. And then we go to color, uh, to set that color. Uh, we could do set color uh, method, but which we could change different different colors in the material. But if we just go color, uh, it will go for the main one, which is the one we will want to change in this case. And then we want to change it to uh, an item in our array of colors, 
and at the index of ID, which will be the skin color index. Uh, and that's actually it for that. What we need to do then for the skin color is we need to set up uh, some colors. Uh, we will pop this up and add, I don't know, let's go with three. Yeah, so let's go with, I don't know, maybe some greenish one like that. Uh, apparently no alpha. Should really have an alpha. Uh, let's go with uh, maybe more brown orange. And let's go with, uh, I don't know, yellow tint like that. Also with alpha. Not sure it matters, but it looks better. Okay, uh, and then we should actually be able to change the uh, the skin color. Or no, we shouldn't, uh, because we haven't uh, linked the uh, the skin mesh renderer, and it's not here. And why is that? That is because we're not compiling. Uh, the project is not compiling. We check in the console, and what did we miss? We missed the break, of course. So we always need to add the break in the different cases. All right, let's go. Let it compile. And now we have a reference to the skin mesh render, uh, an option to li link it. So let's link it. Uh, we go to the uh, mesh I have, which is called orc base, and then the actual mesh is in the plane 001. That's bad naming, but that's not what this is about. Okay, uh, let's play. No, because we also need to set up the buttons. It's good, I'm learning uh, while you're learning, that's fine. So that's the plus button. So let's put that as skin color up. And then let's take the other one and take it as skin color down. Cool. And now let's finally change some skin color. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Very nice. Uh, all right, so it's time for the last uh, element, uh, the, the last attribute we will change, uh, which is the hair color. We will need a new array of colors. We will call it hair colors. And da, 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 we want a new index called hair color index uh, and we need new button functions so let's borrow the last one I'll do the copy pasting real fast and maybe you're thinking to yourself couldn't this be done more smoothly uh, yes it could if we would be able to send uh, send some actual uh, arguments with the buttons and also, it's this is easier to get an overview of in the tutorial, so uh, I'm sticking with this. Uh, so now I think we got the hair color, 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 yep. Okay, so let's make the case of the hair color, and actually let's not make the base. Appearance detail dot uh, hair color, and let's add a break right away so we don't forget it later. Okay, in this case we actually need to make a couple of uh, checks. We don't we don't remove any objects, but we modify objects. But we need to check that they're there because we don't always know that. Because sometimes we have the empty hair and the empty beard, like when it's clean shaven, and then we can't change the color. And if we try to change the color of something that doesn't exist, Unity will be very very mad, and your game will crash. So we don't want that. So we need to make a couple of safety change uh, checks in here. Uh, so we'll make an if statement. If active hair uh, isn't null, so we know it exists. Uh, but we also need to check that the active hair uh, has a get uh, has a component has a mesh renderer on it. So we will check if it has get component uh, mesh renderer is a null. Uh, so we check if the game object's there and if it has a mesh render. That's what this line does. Uh, we are allowed to do what we want to do. Uh, so let's do that. Which is we want to get the mesh renderer active hair dot get component sorry get component mesh renderer and we want to change the materials uh, 
color to hair colors then I Yep, 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 yep. Okay, that's the what we're gonna do. But we don't want to change just the hair. We also want to change the beard to the same color. So let's go with that. Active uh, beard. Active beard. Active beard. And also hair colors because they're the same color. <coughs> okay. Uh, so there we have the mm, 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 those. The, the functions uh, required to change the hair color. So let's go and uh, link that up in Unity. Let's see if we get any errors. We do. And uh, why is that? Oh, we need to add the parentheses here. And that should clear us. And it does. Okay, let's link up the buttons. That's the up, so that'll be uh, hair color up, and this will be the hair color down. Okie dokie. Uh, now we what we need to do is we need to actually create some some hair colors. Uh, if you wonder why uh, the UI looks different in the game uh, game view than from scene view, it's because I have post post processing uh, on this scene, and in Unity two thousand seventeen, it uh, doesn't just affect what's uh, seen through the camera, so that's why it looks a little different. Uh, all right, uh, so in customization manager, let's add a few hair colors, right? Uh, so maybe there could be one that's uh, dark gray. Maybe there could be one that's blonde. Maybe there's one that could be reddish. And uh, yeah, let's let's uh, try it out. So now we don't have any hair, but we want to change the hair color. Let's see if it gives us a crash. It doesn't. That's fine. So let's create a hair, and then let's change the hair color, and it changes. Voila, let's add a beard to that as well. Uh, and there we are. See, that's the problem. We also need to add a check where uh, if there isn't a beard already, it should adapt to the current uh, hair color. So we don't need to tint it twice. So let's add a function for that. Uh, and actually, the only thing that we need to do right here is uh, when we change the hair model, we will apply the... Uh, the hair color to that as well. Uh, of course, this should be before the break. Sorry. Uh, apply modification, but we will add another case, which is first detail dot um, hair color, and we will go with the active uh, hair color index. We will do the same for when we change the beard mod. Not twice necessarily. That's fine. Okay, uh, so that should uh, change that. So now if we go back, and hit play, and we uh, we have a hair, and we change the hair color to blonde, and we add a beard, that'll also be blonde automatically. Cool. Okay, uh, a, fi a few final touches. As I said, uh, we don't want it to have no tusks at all, and a good way to prevent that is to apply an appearance already from the get-go. Like, when the game starts, it will have one appearance. And uh, that is a very good way, uh, a, a good um, incentive for us to create the randomize function, which we also want to apply to a button. So let's create the randomize function. I will put this on top, because it's more of a general thing. Uh, so let's do the public void. Randomize. We want it to be public because we want it to uh, be accessible, accessible from a button. Uh, we will also call this from the start. This is the inherent Unity Mono Develop uh, thing, which uh, right away when the game object is gets becomes active, uh, it will run this method. And from this method, we will run the randomize. So every time the game starts, it will run the randomize. Right now. Randomize. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to apply modifications on all of our modifications that's, that are available. Uh, so let's start with appearance detail dot hair model. No, not the color. Model. 
uh, and then uh, what well, we what do we want to send here? We want to send a random value. So we will need to send a random int between zero and uh, the max value. Okay. So we will make a random dot range zero hair models dot length. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Uh, and now you might think, oh, aren't you doing the minus one here? Don't you need to do that? No, because random range, when it takes ints, uh, it goes uh, exclusive on the max. If it were been floats, we uh, would need to go uh, one step below. But when it's uh, int, it doesn't, like if the length is three, then it wouldn't go with, uh, it wouldn't uh, include three in this random range raffle, so to speak. Okay. So that's uh, hair. Uh, I will do exactly the same for the other four. Okay, so now we have the randomized function, which will randomize all of the uh, attributes that we have created. And it runs from the start. But we also want to hook this up to the, uh, to the uh, randomized button. So let's do that first. Randomize button. We will go to that and customize manager, customization manager, and we will pick up the randomize. Okay, so now from by default it should uh, randomize all the attributes we have. And it does. And if we click the button, it will do some more randomizing. So yeah, that's basically the functionality we wanted. Uh, so we're basically done. Uh, now, uh, the last thing I promised you was that we were going to create a, a way for us to save this in the dictionary. Uh, so if you are familiar with dictionaries, that's great. Uh, I'm going to just go over it real quick. What it is, it's a data collection of keys and values. So you can think of it as, um, as something, as, as, a, as an array where you can, uh, where you can store, instead of just one value you can store two values so you you don't uh, you don't access it by an index you access it by another variable uh, so let's create that i think we need to we are already using systems.collections.generic uh, otherwise it won't work so you need to use that so let's create a dictionary with a key value pair uh, having the appearance i think we're going to use the appearance detail as the key And we are going to use the int as uh, a value. All right. Uh, so let's create a public void, which is the save function. I'll put it at the bottom. Appearance. Uh, in which we will add key value pairs. Uh, Con containing our current data uh, to this dictionary. Uh, so uh, let's uh, create, well, let's make it a new. Uh, we need to declare, um, initialize it, I guess it's called. Uh, so uh, saved uh, parents, I think we call it, equals new. No, we didn't. Chosen parents, sorry. Chosen parents equals new dictionary parents detail int what did I do wrong this time chosen the parents chosen the okay it's just because I can't spell there we have it okay right and then we're going to add stuff to this we are going to add a print detail dot. Uh, let's start it from the top. So hair model, and then we go with the hair uh, index. We call it right. Yeah. Oh, my face is in the way. I hope it didn't. I hope I didn't block anything. Do, 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 do. 
Okay, so now we stored all the all the value in a dictionary, and then you can extract uh, whatever you want from that and use it uh, as you wish. Uh, but other than that, I think we're done. Uh, I'm sorry for being a little um, slow in the head today. Uh, it's a Sunday, I guess. Uh, but now, uh, now you know how you could uh, create your own uh, character customizer, customizer, and you can of course do, expand this and have more variables, have fewer, uh, have more colors, have more other races. You can do this. You can switch uh, genders and uh, models and everything. Only limit is your imagination. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope I wasn't. Uh, unclear on anything if i was uh, please uh, write a comment and i will answer it as soon as i can i really do uh if you liked it i would love if you could subscribe and you you could um you'll be notified when uh, we upload something fun next time uh please also comment if you put this in any of your games and and tell me how it went uh that'd be super cool okay uh thank you guys um until next time bye